A police officer is recovering tonight after accidentally shooting himself during a traffic stop this afternoon in Brown County. He had left in a vehicle and the officers tried to talk, stop him to um, talk to him about this welfare situation and he led them on a pursuit. The latest on what happened tops tonight's Fox 11 News at 9. Tonight, we are continuing our coverage of an incident on a Brown County highway that held up drivers for hours. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight at 9. The 36-year-old Hobart Lawrence police officer is expected to be okay after accidentally shooting himself this afternoon. Meanwhile, authorities say the suspect was safely taken into custody after a standoff that left part of Highway 29 there closed down for much of the afternoon. On the left of the screen here, you can see where the incident happened near County Double F or Hillcrest Drive on Highway 29. On the right, Temi Lynn sent in this video showing the officer being uh, stretchered to an ambulance. Fox 11's Ben Krumholtz brings us the details. A scary situation kept part of Highway 29 closed for about three hours this afternoon. It stemmed from a call for a welfare check at about 8 o'clock this morning. A short time later, around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the officer spotted the male. Um, a small, short pursuit ensued with the male. Um, the male ended up stopping. Authorities say that pursuit started near Highway Double V and Highway 29. It ended with the 30-year-old Hobart man pulling over at the next exit near Highways 29 and Double F. That's when police say a seven-year veteran of the Hobart Lawrence Police Department accidentally shot himself in the hip. Any idea what the officer was doing that he, his gun accidentally went off? Uh, at that time, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Um, I know it was shortly after um, the mail had pulled over. The officer was starting to get out of the car, I believe, when this occurred. Police say crisis negotiators were eventually able to get the suspect out of his vehicle and taken into custody. They weren't able to tell us what led to the welfare call originally and why the driver wouldn't get out of his vehicle initially. I'm Hobart Village Administrator Aaron Kramer. Joining me this morning is Hobart Lawrence Police Captain Michael Rankus. If you need spellings, we have the nameplates here for your benefit. Also joining us this morning is the Town of Lawrence Administrator Patrick Wetzel. Uh, for today's press conference. Uh, Captain Rankus will have a statement to make at this time, and following the conclusion of that statement, we will take limited questions uh, from the media. So with that, Captain Rankus. Good morning. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Brown County Sheriff's Department, the Brown County Communication Center, the Green Bay Police Department, the Oneida Police Department, the Wisconsin State Patrol, County Rescue, and the Brown County Highway Department for their assistance during and following the incident yesterday. I would also like to thank the motorists for their patience who were delayed and detoured because of the event. The Hobart Lawrence Police Department was investigating a welfare check on a 30-year-old Hobart man. During that investigation, officer observed the individual driving on Highway 29. Officers attempted a traffic stop. However, the driver did not respond to the officers. The officers were ultimately able to stop the vehicle and because of the teamwork with our other agency partners, we were able to safely take the subject into protective custody concerning the welfare check we were investigating. Unfortunately, during the incident, a seven-year veteran of the Hobart Lawrence Police Department was injured because of an accidental discharge of his service weapon at the scene. It's important to stress that the officer was not in contact or near the subject at the time of the discharge. The incident is under review to determine the cause of the discharge the initial review will consist of reviewing all the available body camera footage, in-car squad camera footage, and officer statements. I appreciate there's probably some questions, and I can take those now. Can you tell me what kind of service weapon you guys use, and have you had any other accidental discharges because of the type of weapon? Uh, at this point in time, outlining if it would be a firearm deficiency or an officer deficiency without getting into the review, I think would be a little premature and saying it would be one or the other. We have no other uh, unintentional or accidental discharges, though. Can you tell me what type of weapon it is? We carry six hours. Um, what was the nature of the welfare check? Um, it was for uh, individual who had um, some erratic behavior that individuals were concerned about. But as far as uh, that goes, I can't uh, elaborate any further. OK, so he's in protective custody. What exactly does that mean? The incident is ongoing, and I can't uh, 
state or disclose, but he was taken into protective custody uh, for the welfare check. Okay. What did the officer do exactly? Like, was it an accident? I mean, did he trip? Do you guys have an idea of what he might have done to discharge the weapon? The incident's still under review, and we're going to be taking a look uh, at all the available um, body camera and squad camera to kind of get a, a very clear picture uh, of what actually happened, um, and that includes talking to the officer uh, as well. You mentioned that he wasn't anywhere near the person that you were trying to take into custody, um, but was he, was, did this happen, you know, before that person was taken into custody, after the person was taken into custody, and kind of where in the timeline of pulling over this person? Uh, before he was taken into custody. Um, was there anything found in the vehicle of the person, of the suspect? Uh, at this time, the, the incident's still under review, uh, and that's going to be part of the, the total picture that we're going to be put together. Do you have the officer's name yet being released or the suspect? The officer's name and the suspects will not be released at this time. How is the officer doing? I'll answer. Okay. Uh, the officer is in good condition out of respect for the family and his privacy concerns. Uh, that's really all I can say at this moment other than we are very relieved with the news that we received this morning. And we uh, look forward to a big welcome back. I know that you can't share too much about his medical to be under no surgery or anything of that nature. Again, due to privacy concerns, we're, we're not we're not going to give you much more than that information other than he is in good condition. And again, we look forward to him returning to work, and, and we miss him. Uh, one other thing, um, what charges could this person be, be facing? Um, yesterday, um, the investigator told us, could be eluding an officer. Could there be more charges that are filed? going to be filed after an officer injured himself because of, in the nature of the pursuit? Um, due to the unfortunate circumstances of the officer injuring himself, that has no bearing on what he's charged with. Um, he'll be charged uh, if he's charged with anything that would be fitting of what uh, his actions that were, that had occurred. So what happens next? It, the investigation obviously continues. Is there some an outside source looking at the discharging of weapon. There's an internal review process that will be uh, ongoing. How difficult was it to deal with the incident on the highway? Uh, with the agency partners that we have, uh, the situation um, went uh, very well, and I attribute that to the agency partners that we have with the Brown County Sheriff's Department, Highway Department, uh, to ensure that we had uh, adequate resources there um, and that things were communicated amongst each other very properly. Uh, and that goes with the uh, communication center as well. Uh, it was a really good example of uh, teamwork uh, in the Brown County area. Can you tell me what hospital the officer went to for treatment? Not at this time. I know that you weren't able to mention much about the nature of the welfare checks, but enough where your officers felt like this person needed to be taken into custody because it started with a welfare check. They were not able to make contact in the morning and then found him on the road hours later. The choice was he definitely needed to be in custody. Yeah, and that's why they attempted the traffic stop, so they can check the welfare. Can you tell me how, do you know um, the speed that this person um, reached or your officers reached in the short pursuit? That entire uh, area is all part of the review process uh, that we have that will be ongoing. In conclusion, oh, oh you had a question? Yes, uh, how fast was the uh, officer able to get to the hospital? I don't have that off uh, the actual transport time for there. I know County Rescue was there uh, providing medical aid as well as the officers providing aid to the officer immediately, or right away the officer aid was there. I don't have the exact times though. Captain, how are the rest of your team doing? They're doing well. They're concerned, obviously, for their coworker, um, but uh, everyone is rallying together to, uh, to get him the support that he, he needs and deserves. Any other questions from any of the media? When can we expect maybe another update on the officer's condition or, or at, at a later time, the investigation? I obviously don't know how long it will take or what it entails, but... 
Yeah, there's copious amounts of uh, video to get through and statements that we need to uh, really sift through. So an exact time frame I don't know. I uh, will be speaking with the officer later uh, so we can see uh, as quickly as we can get you guys some updates. Anyone else? So again, on behalf of the village of Hobart and the town of Lawrence, we appreciate you coming out here this morning. Again, our primary concern um, is for the well-being of our officer. We're, we're close-knit here. We're, we're, it's a small building. Um, we see this officer every day when he's on duty. And uh, I know this is a difficult time, the time of the year. So this was not just a professional blow to us, but it was a personal blow to us. Um, uh, main thing is we thank the people of both the village and the town. We've already received numerous uh, expressions of support this morning. We know, for the most part, they appreciate and they, they love their police. And, uh, again, we just can't wait for that officer to return and get back on the road. And uh, we're going to be here with smiles, balloons, eh, probably some good eats, too. And we have that welcome back for him. Uh, so... Again, we appreciate your patience. We know you have a job to do as well, and we can't answer a lot of questions, but it's not even been 24 hours. And uh, No offense to anyone, but our biggest concern right now is getting him back and getting him back in good shape and getting him through this difficult time and being there for his family and friends.